Hello, this is George Hutton, and you are listening to the Mind Persuasion Podcast. Today we continue our study of Money Brain. For more information, please visit mindpersuasion.com forward slash money dash brain. More money is always better. Today we'll start to shift away from money as a theory, as a thing that we can talk about and look at currently and historically. We know what it is, that it is always closely related to both power and corruption in any society, and how it has existed since the dawn of time. We know that it is based on a deep human instinct, and that even lower animals have the idea of debt built into their groups, bats and chimps, for example. Now we'll slowly shift into money as it exists in our brains. A general subjective desire, a meta-desire. The more of this meta-thing, money, that we have, the more of everything else we can get. And since we know we will always need more stuff, more food, more electricity, more water, more clothing, etc., we will always need more of this meta-thing that we call money. And to do this, we need to obliterate one common money belief that is very common but also very wrong. This is an internal idea that must be fully embraced before we start to think about money as clearly and objectively as we can. First, the myth, and then the truth. Myth. I only need a certain amount and I'll be fine. This is very common. That we only need a huge pile of cash and we'll be set for life. In the movies, this is commonly referred to as F.U. money. The amount of money that will allow you to say F.U. to the rest of the planet. If you are like most people, you have bills. You hate going to work. 90% of the stuff you spend your money on are things you must spend your money on, or else bad things will happen. If you don't pay the rent, you'll be out on the street. If you don't pay your credit card bill on time, they'll cut you off and you'll be ruined. If you don't pay your car loan, you'll have to take the bus. These are very real and present issues that need to be dealt with. They will never go away. So it is very common to wish for one big chunk of money to buy some land, buy a house, buy enough stuff to give the world the finger and then quietly Netflix and chill your way into the sunset. Unfortunately, this is a myth. One way we'll see this myth play out is what happens to blue-collar type people who win sudden large amounts of money. If it really were true that one huge lump sum of money would forever solve your problems, then blue-collar winners of lotteries would be the happiest people on earth. But the opposite is true. They are usually much more miserable after a few years. Why is this? Let's see. The Sudden Money Misery Syndrome Suppose you've got a middle-aged couple, no kids. They both work. Like most people, they hate their jobs. They hate their boss. But they make enough to just get by. Then they win the lottery. They do the natural thing. They quit their job. They move to a much nicer neighborhood. And then expect their life to be smooth sailing. But then something happens. Soon they get bored. When they bought their house, it felt good, probably the best feeling they'd ever had. But like all other good things, that soon becomes a memory. Once they are used to the house, the neighborhood, all the big screen TVs, the game room, etc., they become bored. When you go after any goal, it feels fantastic when you achieve it, but then you get the post goal letdown. It is said that there are two tragedies in life not getting your goals and getting them. Getting to the point where you must face the truth that you will never get your goals is incredibly painful, but also painful is the point after which you've achieved all your goals. Humans are goal-centered organisms. Even if we have jobs we hate, we are still satisfying goals every day. Objectives that aren't easy are automatic. Even if we satisfy objectives set by other people, they still feel like ours. Even if you don't like your job very much, you will soon take ownership of it. You will call it your job. If somebody else at work tries to tell you how to do your job, you'll tell them what's what. Take that daily objective away from us and we feel empty, bored, like life is pointless. If you know people who have retired, you know they must keep busy or they'll go crazy. Even if it's collecting stamps or doing something passive. So when our imaginary lottery winners suddenly start to feel bored, they do the natural thing. They buy more stuff. This is the same as a new heroin addict who is chasing the proverbial dragon. But just like a heroin addict, each new hit or purchase 
feels less wonderful than the previous purchase. This is also why the children of the super-rich have so many issues. They have tons of money, so much that they can keep buying stuff, but they don't have any real goals that awaken their natural human spirit. But lottery winners aren't children of the super-rich. They only have a certain amount of money. Before long, they keep buying things, but the satisfaction wears thin. This is why most recipients of unexpected windfalls are broke and miserable after only a few years. The truth. Having money is sought because most of us don't have that much. So naturally, we fantasize about that which we don't have. But like most fantasies, the reality is always different. Consider the idea that a sudden windfall from any source may be the worst thing that could ever happen to you. More truth. Survey after survey finds that when you ask people realistic questions, not fantasy questions, questions like how much money would make your life more comfortable, the answer is always the same, between 10 to 15% more than now. This is true for blue-collar workers. This is true for the 0.1% of the 0.1%. And this is the truth that you must embrace if you are to master money. Essential Money Truth No matter how much money you have, no matter how much money you earn, you will always want more. From a structural level, this makes a certain bit of sense. The future is uncertain. We never know what is coming. Even if you have enough to pay for food for the rest of your life, electricity for the rest of your life, your Netflix subscription for the rest of your life, there will still be a sense of unknown in the future. No matter how much you have stockpiled, you will always want to stockpile just a little bit more just in case. But the flip side of getting money, if we are going to stick to the idea that the best money always comes as a result of something you provide to somebody else that they appreciate and are glad to pay you for, then making more money is something that you'll always want to do. Making money is a very enjoyable and necessary social function. The more skills you learn, the better services or products you can provide, the more money you'll happily receive from others. The basic human transaction of somebody willingly handing you some cash, cash they could spend anywhere else, to happily receive something you made or helped to make, is one of the best feelings you'll ever experience. To say you want to get to a point where you don't need more money is to say you want to never have to deal with people again. Consider this idea to be an impossibility. Embrace your truth. Making money is natural. Making money is instinctive. Making money honestly serves greater society. So long as you draw breath and are a functional human, you will always crave more money. I'm George Hutton. Thank you for listening to the Mind Persuasion Podcast. For more information, please visit mindpersuasion.com forward slash money dash brain. I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Mm-hmm.